Hi, we're Riley and Durant. I'm Andy Durant. I'm Nick Riley. And uh, this is our studio, Slap Bang, in the middle of Leeds, in the north of England. Uh, this is Mark over here. He's our in-house yeah. engineer. Can you explain how we took teams up with Mark? Yeah, I met you a couple of years ago, didn't you? You were warming up for us at a gig uh, in Newcastle. Uh, I think you then sent over a couple of demos for our yeah. Newbury show, which is uh, our radio show on Galaxy FM. Uh, really liked them, signed them to our label. Uh, and then since then, you've sort of wormed your way in, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> wormed my way in, I think I've been on credit. And, and now you you're um, a sort of in-house engineer. Yes. Wait, I'll wait for you, Andy, if I say it as well. Yeah. Uh, you probably know us, probably from our Galaxy FM shows. We've done remixes for labels like Data, Positiva, CR2, Black Hole. Um, Sound-wise, difficult to put a, a name on it, really. It's but a cross brand. It's probably mainly edging towards Progressive House. Uh, probably when best we first, known when we started off the trance, didn't we? Yeah, we were back sort of when we when we first got together around 2002, 2003. We we're making quite a big trance sound. Um, did that probably for a couple of years, and uh, over time it's moved, changed. Uh, every single you know week, it seems that we're kind of trying something new, something a bit different. Um, but you know, same with our DJ sets and radio shows. Really, it's kind of you never really know what you're going to get. We just come in here. We don't when we do a track. We don't come in with a set idea. We just experiment, uh, try different loops, different bass sounds, um, see what gels together, see what works, and then yeah, just that's the track. I okay, like most people, I would imagine we uh, start with just a kick drum. Uh, for that, we just load a sample straight into the NN19 sampler within Reason, which works exactly the same, just a software version of like the old Akai ones that we've got in the racks there. Um, you know, whack in just an old 4 4 loop, give it a bit of EQ within Reason's. Um, there's only a tiny little EQ thing in Reason, but it actually seems to work really quite well. Give that a bit of bottom end. Bosh, we're done. I mean, we try. We don't hang around too much. I know a lot of people might spend like three or four hours. Mark, for example, will spend <laughs> three or four hours <laughs> making a kick drum, um, and you know I think that's fairly common. But because of the way that Reason works and the workflow in it, it's quite nice. Just to, something. It sounds okay. It's decent. Let's move on. And then right at the end of it, we might tweak some things around. We might mess around with the EQs on it. But kicks in, move on. So the next thing would be a little bit of. Cushion. The kicks are normally samples <laughs> direct from uh, yeah. other people's records. Pretty much all our kicks are robbed and we've got a bank of five or six that we'll use for all our tracks that we've stolen originally and then we've you know added our own compression or EQ. Um, I think that, you know, to be honest, that's the way a lot of people work. I mean, we found our own kicks. Yeah, we've had one come back to it, <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Okay, so we've got a kick drum in there. And the next thing that we've started to do at the moment is add in um, a little bit of kind of paddage, ambient sort of stuff, rather than going straight in with a lot of percussion. So you get um, a kind of little bit of melody towards the start of the track. So here we're using the uh, drum machine which is a very, very um, old school way of, of working, but it actually is, is, is quite nice. Um, so we've got a, a little sample in here, which just sounds like that. Turn up a sec. We've put in a pattern um, and, and written that into the track, and it's just a very simple. Uh, so once we've got our little pad loop in there, um, and it's just playing the, that, that one little a bit of side chain on. Uh, I know there's a few people who didn't realise you can actually side chain and side chain quite well within Reason. There's a slightly odd way of going around it, but basically it's it's, a, it's an easy process. Create a kick drum. So in here, so we, we use the NN19 sample again, whack a kick drum sample into it. Um, and then if you flip it round in the rack, Um, you can see these are what things are plugged into. You would unplug it because it will automatically route itself up to the mixer. Unplug it in the back and create a, it's called a spider audio merger and splitter. And this is basically so we can put uh, one sample into here and it will give it multiple outputs. So that's got five or six outputs now. So that's going to be used as uh, our side chain and we can side chain five or six different things from it. Uh, so we can create a compressor on our pad sound, which is here, flip it round, plug it in to the output of the audio merger and splitter, and once that's, once that's on, you get that nice bounce to it. Okay, so we've 
so we've got our kick and we've got a, a nice side chain pad so we've got a nice little groove going just from the start tend to add in a little bit more percussion got some white noise coming in here which is also side chained that's bouncing along with it uh, some hats here again are through the actual through the drum machine uh, you can see the pattern we just you whack in a pattern there we could change that to anything And then as soon as you're done, you found one that you like, turn it off, right click and copy pattern to track and that'll just whack that pattern straight into your track and you can chop that up and do whatever you want within there. It basically just puts a kind of a little um, MIDI, note, no, MIDI notation of it in there. Because this is actually a remix, it's time to bring in some of the elements of the uh, of this person's track and start to put in some of the parts that we've been given. Because Reason doesn't use sort of raw audio, you can't just throw a WAB in there like you can in, in Logic or Cubase. We need to make this into something that we can mess around with and chop up within reason. Okay, so I've just opened up um, the, the same cowbell loop within Recycle, and it's just, the, it's just the same loop. I need to tell Recycle how long the loop is, uh, just by guessing, it's probably four bars, which is right, because it's coming up saying the original tempo is 128, which is roughly what it should be. Um, so the next thing you do is whack this uh, preview toggle on, pull the sensitivity up, and this will, there's the, the software will just, you see it's already got the beginning uh, of each little beat within within this sample, so each of these now will be separate. So if I just simply now save that as a Rex2 file, save that as cowbells, I can then go back into Reason, I can create a Rex loop player, open up the same thing, the file that we've just made. I can preview that and play it over the track. And the good thing about the Rex loop player is I think this is actually one of the best things about Reason. I mean, like we were saying, we, we use a, a bit of logic, a little bit of everything. The one thing that makes Reason stand out over any other program is this Rex loop player because it gives you so much freedom. If I work that in, if I just press to track now, that will stick that loop in the track in time. Once you've hit to track with it in the uh, the Rex loop player, it'll um, come up with something like this, and this is your your main arrangement for you. Double click within this thing that we call Cricket because it sounds like the theme from the Cricket. Double click in it, and you get this. Now this is all the different pieces. In you remember in um, uh, Recycle when. It, chopped the, uh, the the little loop into loads of different parts. These are all the different parts now, so. And they also correspond to keyboard notes, so I'll chop it straight onto your keyboard as well. So you can either leave it as it is, just playing the straight loop, or we could put our own loop in. If I just hit record, I could then. So that's kind of really open stuff up, because you can imagine that's just with a very, very simple generic cowbell loop. Once you start having more complicated samples and vocals within there, uh, and automatically it's patched it to all the different notes on your keyboard, it opens up a, a massive world of possibility of, of chopping and changing things and, and, and re-editing stuff, um, which is really what makes the, the Rex loop player something that's like invaluable to what we do. So we've got a basic loop there of percussion, paddy stuff, whatever else. Um, we need to add in just some other bits of percussion, like the shaker, which we, again we've used here just the drum machine. Um, whack on a little bit of compression, add the compressor to it, and uh, as, soon as, as soon as that side chain's on there, it gives it a little bit more of a groove. 